Good morning, everybody. Uh, apologies, I'm a minute or so late. We've got problems with our internet this morning, so hopefully the the uh, 4G will will kick in and we'll be okay. Uh, but it's uh, it's lovely to be back with you all this morning. Um, as Debs suggested yesterday, Red Deb said uh, it's Wacky Wednesdays. Um, so I think Lucy attributed it to that name. So uh, I'll have something for you to. Uh, to, to try out today, something a little bit different, different way of praying, but it's a real blessing to be with you today. Uh, thank you all for, for joining us and um, yeah, for being part of this community at this time in prayer. Um, so today is the, the third of the rogation day, so I've gone with this uh, bit, with a bit of a theme. I've got my new gardening glove on. I'll share a little bit more about that in a minute, uh, but it's, uh, it's great to be with you and uh, it's another gorgeous day. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to get out and about today and just enjoy the sunshine but uh, starting the day like this is fantastic so it's lovely to be here with you as I say um, it's uh, it's been dubbed wacky Wednesdays so I don't know whether that's bec just because of me or whether that's because of the style of prayers that we're going to be doing but we will be trying out something a little bit different um, that you can that you can use yourselves throughout the day and you can share with kids and grandkids so it should be quite good fun um, but I'm, uh, I'm wearing my, my new gardening glove. It was my birthday the other day, and apparently because I'm getting slightly closer to middle age, um, gardening presents were, were what I was getting. Um, but uh, this is my new, new glove, and it's uh, the, the reason that I've worn it today, obviously gardening with the provision that we've been talking about over the last few days, uh, but also it's, it's protection, isn't it? It's quite a good one, protection. Um, it's, uh, it's hopefully going to stop me from being stabbed by thorns too much. And obviously when we, when we start praying, uh, we often think about asking for protection for ourselves and for others. Um, but it also got me thinking about, sometimes when we're praying we can feel like we're wearing a, a glove or some sort of protection when we're actually praying. And, and with all relationships, there are different things, different stages that we go through. And we, we start relationships, I think, initially with a, with a respect uh, for the other the other party in the relationship and then it it moves on to a, a sort of commonality and you start to find things that um that you have in common that's that are similar between yourself and and uh, the other person and then it moves on to a, you have more of a rapport with them and you gain trust and i think it's a bit like that with with us and god when we're praying you know we start off with that that respect for god that knowledge that he is our our creator uh, and our salvation and then it and then it develops and we start to share things and and we gain that trust and then eventually um, it leads to what is a really key part of of any relationship where there's a bit of vulnerability and this is always why I'm a little bit scared with the, the gardening but I'm going to get um, stabbed or um, cut to, to shreds by something generally a rose bush or the hawthorn bush in our garden but taking the glove off when you're gardening, you, you, you do become more vulnerable, don't you? Just having your bare hand. Um, but it also gets you closer to, to nature. And, and sometimes I think we need to, to take a metaphorical glove off when we're, when we're praying and, and, and be a bit more vulnerable. And it's something that I find can be quite challenging. Uh, I don't know about you, maybe I'm on my own with this, but it's quite challenging. But if we're more vulnerable with God, then it will allow us to to spend more time with him, getting to know him even closer and, uh, and our relationship will grow and grow and grow. So that's what my glove was about this morning. Um, but we're also doing something a little bit more with hands. So we'll talk about that as we, as we get into our prayers. Um, this morning we're looking at um, Psalm 132. If you would like to get your finger in, in, in the Bible and uh, hold it in there ready for to flip to the page. And then we're carrying on with Luke's Gospel, we're looking at chapter 7, uh, verses 1 to 10, uh, which is quite good fun for me because not only was it what we're following on from uh, earlier this week, it's also following on from our family service that we did a couple of weeks ago, uh, looking at uh, the wise man building his house upon the rock. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that in a few moments, but let's, let's start together in prayer. I'm going to start with something, a, a short prayer from the Northumbria community before we continue with the common worship. And so let's pray together. Calm me, O Lord, as you still the storm. 
Still me, Lord, and keep me from harm. Let all the turmoil within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when, tr when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So our, our first reading um, is from Psalm 132, and it's, uh, it's thinking about the promise that God has made to David, and David has made to God, King David. Um, and I love King David because... Um, uh, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but he's a bit of an idiot at times. And uh, it makes me realise that actually sometimes I do things that are wrong, but David has a wonderful relationship with God and, and it comes from a place of vulnerability that we were talking about earlier. Uh, and so I love reading some of David's things because sometimes he gets it really wrong, but God's uh, always there with him and, and helps him out, um, sort of guides him. So let's, let's look at David and uh, what Psalm 132 says. Lord, remember David and all that he suffered. He made a solemn promise to the Lord. He vowed to the mighty one of Israel. I will not go home. I will not let myself rest. I will not let my eyes sleep nor my eyelids close in slumber until I find a place to build a house for the Lord. A sanctuary for the mighty one of Israel. We heard that the ark was in Aphrathah, then we found it in the distant countryside of Jar. Let us go to the sanctuary of the Lord, let us worship at the footstool of his throne. Arise, O Lord, and enter your resting place, along with the ark, the symbol of your power. May your priests be clothed in godliness. May your loyal servants sing for joy for the sake of your servant David. Do not reje reject the king you have anointed. The Lord swore an oath to David with a promise he will never take back. I will place one of your descendants on your throne. If your descendants obey the terms of my covenant and the law that I teach them, then your royal line will continue forever and ever. The Lord has chosen Jerusalem. He has desired it for his home. This is my resting place forever, he said. I will live here, for this is the home I desired. I will bless this city and make it prosperous. I will satisfy its poor with food. I will clothe its priests with godliness. Its faithful servants will sing for joy. Here I will increase the power of David. My anointed one will be a light for my people. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but he will be a glorious king. And then our Gospel reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. And it's an incredible one, really. It's brilliant. It's, uh, 
it's all about faith. And what I love is there's a little bit of a surprise in this. And the surprise is that uh, Jesus is amazed. Jesus is surprised. He's maybe not caught off guard, but he has a nice surprise in the, in the faith that uh, the Roman centurion has. And so let's read this together. It's Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, a highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help them out. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said. But he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honour. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this, because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. Just incredible, I love that. Uh, so it, let's, let's pray together. Um, some may need prayer for healing, some may need prayer for support and guidance. Um, we might need prayer ourselves, we might need praying, be praying for others. Um, so the, the, the way that I want us to pray today will be using our hands. So I'll share with you in a moment how we're going to do that. It's a prayer actually that Pope Francis suggested while he was in Argentina um, for, for children. And I think it's a beautiful way of praying. So we'll do that now. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as I say, this is Pope Francis' prayer, um, way of praying, a five finger prayer. So I'd like you to hold out your hand. You can be just in front of you, so you're looking at it. You don't have to be high-fiving like I'm doing. But hold out your hand because this is what we're going to be using to pray. Now, with, with our hand, our thumb is the closest to us. And so as we're doing this, uh, as usual, please uh, add the names of people to the comments so that we can pray for them throughout the week. And the people that you pray for and with the thumb in mind may be the, the ones that are closest to you. So our thumb is the closest to us of all the fingers on our hand. And so let's pray for those closest to us, those who we live with, those who we see most often, those who actually may be geographically quite a long way away. But in our hearts, they are the closest to us. And so let's pray for them, for their well-being their relationship with God, for their health, both physical and mental and spiritual. We pray that God will be with them today. We pray that they know how much they're loved. And we pray, Lord God, that you will help us to send them the right messages. Speak to them at the right time. Give them the right words of encouragement. So we pray for all those who are closest. Amen. Uh, next finger along. This is our index finger. And we're already I'm having to tell, tell our kids not to point at people. 
but it is the pointer people refer to, isn't it? It's our index finger. And so we pray for all those people who point us in the right direction. We pray for all of those who have an opportunity to guide us, whether that is teachers in schools, whether it's doctors, whether it's members of the clergy, whether it's leaders in other forms, but help us personally and point us in the right direction, whichever way that might be. <laughs> but we pray for them, for wisdom and for support. And you'll know exactly who it is in your life who, who gives you that, that direction. So pray for them now. That God guides them, gives them the right words to say as well. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our middle finger is the, the tallest, as you can see. And so in this prayer, it represents those who have authority to make decisions. Those who are making an impact on our lives. And so, Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who are who are in government, all those who are key in making decisions about the NHS currently, all those who are key in making decisions that impact not just ourselves, but others around the world. And so we pray for all those who have the weight of that on their shoulders, that Father God, you will just bless them that you will reveal yourself more to them. And so let's pray for all leadership, all those in government, all those who are keeping them honest. We pray for all of them now around the world. Amen. Now it might surprise you that our ring finger is actually at the weakest of our fingers. It's, uh, it hasn't got the strength of the others. And so when we think about our ring finger here, we think about the weakest in our society, those who haven't got the strength. So Lord God, we pray in particular for those who are in trouble, those who are in situations that are difficult at this time and cannot see a way of getting out of them. Pray that you will be in that situation, that you will guide us or others to support them. We pray for children, that they may, may be strong in many ways, maybe weak in others. We pray that you will bless them, Lord God, at this time in particular. And we pray for those who are in trouble, that have got themselves into trouble or or just in a situation which is just so difficult, it's almost unavoidable. Bless them, Lord God. Help them to know that they are not alone. Amen. And then our little finger is the smallest one. It's the one that comes last, but it's the one that's gonna represent us today. Let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray for our own needs. Let's pray possibly with a, a new vulnerability that God will give us what we need today, support us in everything that we need supporting in, help us to support others, but give us strength to do that. And so we thank you, Lord God, for all those who we, we pray for using our our five finger prayer and we pray that you will bless all of us throughout this day amen keep us good lord under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice 
in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from the love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we're going to finish today by saying the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us as a, a way of, of interacting and building relationship with God. And so please say it in whatever form, of traditional, modern, uh, a variation that uh, best suits you. So rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So it's been a real blessing as ever to, to share this time with you. So thank you for joining with us all this morning. Uh, tomorrow we'll be starting something a bit different, I think, with Reverend Debs. And uh, she will be leading us in the Thy Kingdom Come uh, prayers that we're going to be kicking off with. And I'll be back on Friday to share those with you as well. So I believe if, if you haven't already uh, asked Reverend Debs for a copy of the um, the prayers that we're going to be using, please let her know, uh, maybe comment um, in this today, and she will email those to you. Uh, and you'll be thinking about five people that you really want uh, to be praying for throughout this period. Um, so yeah, have a, look, have a look at that, have a look at the resources, and uh, I will see you on Friday, but have, I will be sharing in prayer with you tomorrow as well. So God bless, have a wonderful day, and I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.